Hi, this is Zachary Cole from Trespass Films. I'm going to be doing a demo of stitching Nokia Ozo footage with the Cara VR toolkit and Nuke from the Foundry. We'll take a look at this footage, which is eight different sources coming from the camera. We'll combine these to look as they were shot from one source. This is a mono tutorial. When you are working in mono, you get the best results by reducing the overlap to the essentials. A stereo Ozo tutorial will come in the future. Let's get started. Starting with a fresh Nuke script, let's import the output of the Nokia Creator software, which exports each stream's data into a folder labeled Cam 1 through 8. And we'll just hit the L key, select all, and hit the L key to lay those out in our node graph. Just double checking to make sure that these are in order Cam 1 through 8. Now the first thing we want to do is make sure our project settings are correct. So let's go to project settings. For the Nokia Ozo, the frames per second is 30 and the full size format is 4K lat long. Nuke has already set the frame range based on the footage we've just imported. Now we can add the Cara VR C underscore camera solver node and connect that to our inputs. As you can see, this loads all of our camera streams into one place uh, in the 4K lat long layout. One nice thing that you can do is add a contact sheet and connect those nodes to that. This helps me get familiar with the footage that I'm looking at and each camera and their orientation. This allows us to look at all the streams from the Nokia Ozo. As you can see, they are fisheye lenses and they have a very wide field of view. So now we don't need that anymore. We can take a look at the camera solver. What we want to do is load the Nokia Ozo preset. We click Setup Rig. We load the metadata, and this lays out all of our streams into the correct order of how they are configured on the camera. We can take a closer look and we can see that there are doubling of the chair below us, the actor, the doors, pretty much everything is doubled except for the shower. Now let's take a look at the camera solver settings. Because this is a 91 frame sequence, we want to make sure that we get three keyframes for our solver. So what we can do here is change the step size to 30 and click key all. This generates three keyframes, 1, 31, and 61, and the camera solver will use that in the calculation of the solve. The focal length will leave as optimized single since these are all the same focal length. The lens distortion will change to optimize single since the lens distortion for each stream should be the same. Now we can click match and it takes those three keyframes and does feature matching on them. Now you can see the features that have been identified. We can now hit solve. and it has solved our camera array. This is what the camera array looks like. And now we can take a look at what the solver has gotten us. I'll turn off the overlay for a moment. You can see that this has gotten a little clearer, but these the act but the actor is still doubled. The crutches looked pretty clear, but the lines along the wall uh, double and diverge. Uh, down we have, it looks like we have a ghost here, and we have doubling of the chair, tripling of the chair. Uh, and same thing on this side, there appears to be a ghost here, and doubling and tripling of the chair. And the ceiling has doubling as well. 
what we should do is evaluate at this point the convergence. So if I select the number 10 and I just start using the down arrow key, I can step down through the convergence value from 10 to 9 to 8 to 7 to 6 to 5 to 4 to 3 to 2 and I start to see between 3 and 2 a real change in the image. Before then it looked, was pretty subtle. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. So what this is is a value in meters. It's the distance from the camera to the subject. So for interiors, your rooms are going to be about 2 to 3 meters in width. So we can see that between 2 and 3, things start to really change. So 4 looks like where the crutches are. And 3, between 2 and 3 is where the actor is. So maybe let's go to 2.5. And that actually looks pretty good on the actor. So what we'd like is the actor to be as clear as possible. And we can see that that probably could get a little bit better, his head. Let's really focus on, on his head. So it looks like 2.25 will be a good split the difference, the value of the convergence for his head. And the last little thing before we add any more is we want to hit reject and get rid of any of the matches that are lower than the error threshold. So we can look at the solve error and that went from about six and a half to three and a half and so that's pretty good. Now let's add a Cara VR C stitcher. We also want this convergence to be the same value, 2.25. Let's take a look at how that looks. As you can see, he looks pretty good, but our shoes are doubling slightly in the bottom of the crutch. The wall is doubling a little bit down here. The crutches look good here. The chair looks pretty good. Ceiling is a little doubled still. And our ghost objects still seem to be there. So in looking at this footage, I can see that this is the rear of the camera and it's splitting a object. So what I want to do is I want to update this so that I can see our actor in the middle of our frame and the shower and ropes that are here on the side. This will help in evaluating our stitches so we can click the horizon tool and use the alt command shift and drag that over as a locked horizon until we get our actor in the center. That looks pretty good. We can take another look at our stitcher output. So that's looking much better than the original camera solver node. Things are already starting to become in focus and clear. The easiest thing we can get rid of first is the ghosting of the monopod. So as we go through each camera view and see how it is being used in our stitch, we can see that cam 7 and 8 have the monopod in it and cam 8 it overlaps on our seam so it basically it wraps around so what we want to do is 
add a little space here, create a dot or a knee. I'm using the period to create this. Connect that to the camera solver, open up the camera solver node, select the knee, and choose transform separate from the menu. What this does is it creates a separate spherical transform for each of the camera inputs. And I'm just using the backslash to organize the layout. And because I want to do a little work on cam 7 and 8, I will bring those out a little wider and move my main view back to this side. The other thing we want to do is copy the C stitcher and place that below our join views. Now, the difference between this stitcher and this stitcher, we need to update this one so that it is using the projection of lat long format because basically this spherical transform is changing from a fisheye view to our lat long view right so now we can compare those two So as you can see, just splitting out to spherical format allows for a little bit better stitching overall. We'll go in and mask the monopods just to make sure that they are completely removed. So let's look at cam eight. We'll add a reformat. So in case we're in proxy mode, this will toggle our roto paint to also be in proxy mode. We can then add an articulate roto because this doesn't move. I'm pressing Z to smooth the tangents. And I'm using Alt and Command to add an additional point. Again, Z to smooth the tangents. And then because it overlaps, we'll add one over here as well. And I want to kill the alpha on this. So if we take a look at the alpha for a moment, we can see that there is a smooth blend and we add a channel merge and we're just wanting to cut the alpha not mess with our RGBA at all and we'll say stencil so now if we look at the alpha between the two we can see that we're cutting out where the monopod is and let's do the same thing for cam 7. Again, adding the channel merge, adding a reformat, and the roto paint. We'll look at cam 7. We have our roto paint open. We'll zoom in and do another articulate for this monopod. 
which is the same monopod, just in a different view. Z to smooth the tangents. And if you compare cam seven and eight, you can really see how the back of the chair, we're literally seeing around the monopod. So we can actually see all of the chair. And so the part that's obscured, we're drawing from the other view to fill in. And while that looks like an artifact, that's actually part of the chair, so. We can leave that there. So now let's go back and look at how our stitcher reacts before and after matting out the monopod. The stitcher before we've split it out and added the roto and after. So that's getting very clear. Our actor is super clear. Our shoe has gotten really clear. The edge of the bed has gotten really clear. The top of the shower curtain has gotten really clear. The ceiling's really clear. So while that looks all pretty good, the shower still has some issues. The center knob still looks a little warpy. This is not a straight line. And if we compare it to the original, we can see that this should be much more circular. And this is a straight line. So because this is an Ozo camera, we don't really have a lot of overlap for the back. So we don't have a clean view like we do of the actor of the shower. So cam one and four. So cam one and four are our cleanest views of the shower. But cam seven, eight, six, and five, they all also see the shower. So the one thing we could do is come in here and we could add an alpha for each camera and then try and mask what we want and, and remove what we don't want. But it would be much easier to do an overall change and then just add back what we do want to keep from cam one and four. For this demo purpose, I'm going to copy our entire tree, just so we have that as reference for later. And I'm gonna open up our original camera solver, click over on the cameras tab and scroll down. So if I look at the first camera, cam one, and I select that in our list of cameras, you can see that we have a size and feather control of the alpha. So here's our alpha, we can change camera one's alpha feather to be one and it's fully feathered or to zero and it becomes a nice crisp edge or somewhere in between. I'll leave it here for now. And then for the size, if we go down, it gets smaller. And if we go up, we can use the full image. We don't want to do that. We want to use somewhere in between. So. Let's make it smaller than the default. The default was 0.7, so we can make this 0.4 and a feather of 0.7. So that looks really nice. So now we want to apply that to all these cameras. We can actually just shift select all of the cameras and put that information into the value box. 
And now all of those cameras have that value. And if we go back, we can now take a look at how that stitch is compared to the original stitch. And then compared to our new mask. And that's much better. It's still not quite lining up, so we'll need to go back and add some uh, an additional mask to bring back the parts we do want. So we can add that to cam one and cam three. We'll add a rotospline that is only alpha. We'll take a look at that. And I can I can feather the mask with by hitting E. And now I'll add one to cam four. Take a look at that. And as you can see, this is how I'm adding to my alpha. And now I'll take a look at the original versus the new. And that looks a lot better. But as we compare these two, we can now see that the bottom of the chair has some little bit of holes in it. And this is where the overlap of the cameras really filled in that area where we removed the monopod. So we just need to bring a little bit of alpha back for those two cameras and that should fill that back in. So we can just open those back up. Take a look at that. And I'll look at the other one and add a roto to that. And now if we take a look at the output again, we should see that filled in. And that looks a lot better. This is a straight line. This is a circle. These are not crawling all over the place. The warp looks pretty good. So now that we've done that, let's add a right node and send this to our render farm. The nice thing about Cara VR, because we're adding a bunch of views to our stream, 
there is a preset that you can click on and choose whether you want to just render the main, the stereo, the cams, or all of them. So, so for this one, we just want to render out the main so we can click set and this views has changed from everything there to just the main. If these had values uh, over one, we would write out an EXR, but because these values uh, never exceed one, we shall just write out PNGs because we'll be making a quick time after this. And we'll come back when it's done. So now that we've got that rendered, that looks pretty good. This doesn't warble. This looks pretty clean. These are all pretty clean. The only thing I notice is there seems to be a doubling of his hair at the end. If we switch back to the comp and zoom in on the last frame, we can see that it is indeed doubling. So what happened is I forgot to add keyframes to the stitcher. So if we open up the stitcher, you can see that the step size is 30 and that works fine for this frame sequence, 91 frames. There's not a lot of movement. We can hit key all. And then because I want a keyframe in the last frame, I'll also hit uh, add key there. Now I can render this out and come back and check that. So now I've rendered that out. And indeed, at the end, there is not any doubling. So this is a pretty pretty clean solve. The only thing we might want to do is, is paint a little bit more here. But for our, our intents and purposes, this is pretty good. Thanks for watching. This is Zachary Cole for Trespass Films.